Everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today's video will be part two of our series tackling what we know about the upcoming Wheel of Time television show and the speculation of what we will get from the team that's putting the show together. If you have not watched the first video in the series, go ahead and get yourself caught up before watching this video. In today's video, we're going to tackle one of the biggest variables in whether the Wheel of Time television series will be a success or not, and that is the budget that the show will receive. The budget will affect not only the overall feel of the show from the sets to the CGI, but also it will affect the way the plot is presented and potentially even what content will be cut from the show. Content that will cost a lot of money to create will be more tempting for the showrunners to cut from the story if the budget isn't there to portray it properly. Before we get too much deeper into the video, let's go ahead and put up a spoiler warning for this video. The video is going to have a spoiler rating of green, meaning there will be no spoilers of any kind, so feel free to watch without risk. So in our last video, we addressed the history behind the transition from the book series to a greenlit television series and some of the challenges that facing showrunner Rafe Judkins and his staff. One of the primary factors that will determine what they are able to do will be the budget that the show receives. As of the making of this video, nothing has been announced in regards to the budget for the show, so we're left to wonder how this is all going to turn out. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into what a typical television show budget is in our day and age, what some comparable shows to The Wheel of Time have as their budgets, and ultimately come to an idea of what it will take to make The Wheel of time in a way that most super fans like me want to see it. I'll then give you my prediction as to what I believe the actual budget for the first season of the show will be. Let's start by taking a look at what show budgets are used for and some of the factors that affect how high a budget for a show needs to be. Some of the factors in determining how much an episode costs to make are the cost of building sets, production staff, wardrobe, CGI, location filming, general production cost, and paying the actors and actresses, a cost that will increase the more popular the series gets. We are currently in a golden age of television where television media has become one of the best storytelling mediums. Shows like Breaking Bad, Stranger Things, The Crown, and Game of Thrones are setting new bars for viewership and also for skyrocketing budgets. So what does it cost to make some of our favorite television series? Let's take a look at just a few shows that have been popular in the last 10 years to get an idea of what a normal budget for a television show is. During its time, Lost was one of the most expensive shows ever produced, with a pilot episode costing $14 million to make and subsequent episodes throughout the series costing $4 million apiece. The HBO series Deadwood, a show set in the American Wild West, required construction of an elaborate set and cost $4.3 million per episode. Another HBO show, Boardwalk Empire, had an $18 million pilot, which included the construction of a gigantic boardwalk set and then cost another $5 million per episode to produce. Years before big budgets were normal, HBO spent $9 million per episode on the classical historic drama Rome. They built period-specific sets and hired top-tier actors and actresses. The show was phenomenally successful, but HBO was forced to cancel it after two seasons as its price tag was not justified by its viewership at the time. Band of Brothers cost $12.5 million, and was worth its price tag, but it also had huge names like Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg behind it. Netflix's Sense8 cost $9 million per episode, and The Crown, a very successful show that is more recent, cost a staggering $13 million per episode. The most expensive show on this list and one of the most expensive productions of all time is Game of Thrones. The show started out with a $6 million budget in its first season, which seems low now, but it was a major experiment for HBO at the time. The budget gradually grew to around $10 million an episode in the last season of Game of Thrones, the budget was an incredible $15 million per episode. So these are some of the budgets for other television shows, but the Wheel of Time television show has Amazon and Sony Pictures behind it, and Amazon is making a major push towards creating its own content. If we're to get an idea of what the budget for the Wheel of Time television show will be, we should ask another question. What does Amazon typically spend on its television shows? Well, lately Amazon is committing massive amounts of money to original programming. They've committed to spending north of a billion dollars this year on original content alone, and this is shown in some of the spending they've made on some of their recent shows. Man in the High Castle started off with a $7.2 million an episode budget, 
and grew to $10.7 million in its second year. The Grand Tour, a show starring the crew of formerly from Top Gear, cost a whopping $7.8 million an episode. Stinky Pete was $9.3 million an episode. And this is these are crazy amounts of money, but this absolutely pales in comparison to what they're spending on The Lord of the Rings. Amazon spent $250 million just to acquire the rights to produce the series, not including any production costs. It is currently being projected that they will get a $15 million per episode budget, which is absolutely crazy. But something that must be considered with The Wheel of Time is that this is a completed series and we have the full story. Those of us that have been following The Wheel of Time for years want a faithful adaptation and want to see the television show run until the book series is complete, which will likely take quite a few seasons considering the book series is 15 books long. The only way the show makes it that long is if it's profitable for Amazon. Amazon actually makes their money from original content in a much different way than other streaming companies and cable networks. HBO, for example, makes their money from cable subscriptions and individual subscriptions to their service. The better quality shows they produce, the more subscribers and their bottom line increases. This essentially is the same formula for Netflix and Hulu. Amazon's metrics work a bit differently. So how does Amazon make money off of their video services? Well, first, it has the same model as Netflix, HBO, and Hulu. When someone subscribes to Amazon Prime, Amazon collects their subscription fee, and this makes Amazon more profitable. Where they are different, however, is the main reason that they want to drive someone to purchase Amazon Prime is that they make the majority of their money from their retail and web hosting businesses. An Amazon Prime user is far more likely to use Amazon's other services, and this is what makes a television show that Amazon produces far more profitable for them as a company than Netflix and HBO shows. So this is great, but what does it tell us about whether The Wheel of Time will get multiple seasons? Well, the answer lies in how Amazon measures the metrics for their shows. Amazon measures new Prime users a show brings in by measuring what they call first streams. In essence, a first stream is when a user purchases Amazon Prime and the first video item they watch is for that show. To illustrate this, let's take a look at The Man in the High Castle. This is one of Amazon's more successful shows, and we know it has around 8 million viewers. Amazon announced that The Man in the High Castle's first season brought in 1.15 million first streams, meaning that the first Amazon video content that those 1.15 million subscribers watched was The Man in the High Castle. The metric that Amazon looks for to see if their shows are profitable is the cost per subscriber. The lower the cost per subscriber, the more profitable the show is. Since we know that The Man in the High Castle's first season cost a total of $72 million to produce, and it brought in 1.15 million first streams, we know that the cost per subscriber was right around $63. Considering the annual cost for an Amazon Prime membership is currently around $119 US dollars per year, you can see that Amazon views this to be very profitable, and that is not even considering the other revenue Amazon will generate from each of these new Prime users from their retail business. The Grand Tour, another successful Amazon video original, brought in 1.5 million first streams and had an even more profitable $49 per subscriber number. What we Wheel of Time fans are hoping to avoid is a case like the Amazon show Good Girls Revolt. The show's first season cost them $81 million to create and brought in a measly 52,000 first streams. So it had a horrible $1,560 per subscriber and was canceled after its first season. So let's bring this full circle. How much do I think it will cost to make The Wheel of Time's first season? Well, considering the actors will be the lowest part of the budget in the first season, I believe much of the budget will be used creating sets, wardrobes, and some CGI. The first season will likely be one of the least CGI intensive seasons, however. There will need to be quite a few sets built, either with normal construction or built with CGI. Game of Thrones is probably a great example to compare against. Game of Thrones first season cost $6 million per episode, but it is clear that the production values were lower than the subsequent seasons after HBO realized that they had a hit on their hands. The Wheel of Time's first season will have a far greater scope and have more sets required than Game of Thrones first season. Without spoiling anything or giving away what I'll be talking about in a future video in this series, I believe that this larger scope will require a much larger budget. I believe at minimum a budget of $8 million per episode will be required for the show to meet basic expectations for fans. So what do I think will happen? This is actually where I believe we have good reason to be hopeful as Wheel of Time fans. Based on the way Amazon does their metrics and the amount of money that they are spending on similar projects, and even projects that have less of a fan base than the Wheel of Time, I think that we're going to see quite a bit of money spent on the show. The Wheel of Time has a rabid and devoted fan base. If the quality of the production 
production is high, you will have a very, very large audience that has been waiting years for this adaptation. Keep in mind, prior to the television show for Game of Thrones, the A Song of Ice and Fire series was not even close to as popular as The Wheel of Time was. It was not till after the show was made that the sales of the book series caught up. I believe that we will see a first season budget in the range of eight to ten million dollars per episode. I could also foresee The Wheel of Time generating close to three to four million first streams, which will bode well for the series moving forward. Assuming production quality is high and the show gets a good critical response, I see the budget for later seasons moving into the 12 to 15 million dollar an episode range, which will likely be necessary as the show grows in scope and the need for CGI increases. I have to say I am very excited for what could be, and I think Amazon is the perfect landing spot for the Wheel of Time, even above places like HBO or Netflix, because they can afford to spend and have the ability to make their shows more profitable without fear of losing much money. So what do you guys think? Am I right on the projected budget? Do you think I'm right about how much is going to be needed for the show to be successful? Are you excited or less excited that Amazon is the company producing the show? And I also would love to know in the comments below, are you currently an Amazon Prime subscriber? And if not, will you be subscribing when the show comes out? Please let me know the answers to all of that down in the comments below and make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it if you want to see more of my Wheel of Time content as it releases. I'll be doing some more videos in this series in the coming weeks as we prepare for the Wheel of Time television show. Hey guys, until next time, all you flaming woolheads, have a good one. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. My mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?